So I'm going to talk a little bit about some telehealth disadvantages and advantages. Our patients have a concern about copay for visits that are not done face to face. And I know that we had a lot of pushback from our patients, especially if there's a phone visit. And our theory is if they were seen in the office for the problem or issue that they want to be seen pre pandemic, then the same principles are going to apply for the telehealth visit now during the pandemic. You know, we know that the physical assessment skills are going to be limited. We know that video and telehealth is challenging for a lot of our patients. Many times they've got the screen staring up at the ceiling, or I see their chin, or I only see their hand. And as Dr. Wright discussed earlier, you know, we deal with a lot of patients who don't have smartphones or iPads. We also know that technology changes really rapidly. My iPhone is only a couple of years old, and I'm already starting to see the issues that we're having as our technology updates that my smartphone is having a hard time keeping up. And a lot of the times, because of the rapid change in technology, there's a lot of difficulty keeping up with the burden of use. And that includes our electronic health records. You know, they have a hard time keeping up with the changes. And again, as Dr. Wright has discussed about the internet, you know, internet has been affected especially by speed. My building, my physical practice happens to be in what used to be an old bank. And my physical office space is in the bank vault. So you know that the walls are really heavily lined. And I can't do telehealth in certain areas of my office because of the internet speed. I have to go to a different part of the office in which to do that. Some technology issues, again, our patients may not have a smartphone, they may have lack of computer access or familiarity. I have some patients that are in their 20s and 30s and they are not very computer literate. I have some of my patients who are in their 80s and they're very computer literate, but you can't assume that everyone is going to have that computer literacy. Again, poor connectivity or slow internet speed, there's not a lot you can do about it. I do know that during the pandemic, we did have an issue with that across all of the internet providers. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that so many people were working from home and there was much more internet access going on. And so fortunately, I know I'm in Connecticut, a lot of our providers were able to step up and the internet providers, and they were able to actually rectify that situation fairly quickly. The patients that don't have voicemail set up, you know, this is not a pandemic issue. This was a pre-pandemic issues. And we deal with this on a regular basis that the patients just don't set up their voicemail. So it's really hard to do that pre-appointment check-in or even to leave messages to say, we would like to do some pre-appointment check-in with you. Or the voicemail is full. It's one of those things that kind of sits in my craw, especially if we're interviewing somebody, that if you really want that phone call back, you're going to empty that voicemail. Some of our patients have limited access plans. So their data plan, they don't want to burn up all that time using their data plan for a telehealth visit. Or the patients don't answer the phone at the scheduled time. And that becomes an issue as well. We have to think about some of the other technology issues. We think about our problem visits, things like follow-ups. We think about new patient problems that we can't actually set, put our hands on, on the patient, you know, do a hands-on visit with them. We think about things like medication changes. These are all things that we can do via telehealth, but there's still some patients that they flat out refuse to do a telehealth visit of any kind. They will demand refills on medications. They will demand, you know, especially now this time of year, I need that antibiotic because I can't be sick for the holidays. And they will demand that, but they will refuse to do a visit. And again, our rule in, across our practices is that if you needed to be seen pre-pandemic for this, we are not making any considerations otherwise, unless it's a really extenuating circumstance. We really do stick to this policy. Now, that being said, in the beginning of the pandemic, you know, did we make some concessions? Of course, because we were just getting up and running and we were really trying to like feel our way out to see how are we going to adjust to this? Like Dr. Wright, we left work on a Friday. I was very, very fortunate that on Monday we were up and running with telehealth. And when the stay at home orders came in, we were full telehealth at home doing our own telehealth at home.